let's go and have a look to see what's happening with the Weedinator project at the moment. So this week I've been spending a lot of time upgrading the primary drive motors. There's one of them there and uh, there's the control drivers. They're quite um, posh, they're made by Leadshine. Uh, it's actually very high quality Chinese stuff. And it's got some pretty substantial uh, heat exchangers there. That's pretty good. Uh, actually work really well, they're quite easy to program as well. But uh, because the steering is um, offset, as you can see there, the steering centre is offset from the wheel. There's a wheel centre and there's the steering centre, so we've got offset. So the geometry of the steering is quite complicated. If the centre was above the wheel, it would be a lot easier, but mechanically it's quite difficult to get that together. So it's a lot simpler mechanically to offset it like that. And a lot of tractors use that. A lot of four-wheel tractors, uh, for example, Deutzfahr use this uh, system, obviously not electric, but uh, geared, so it's proven technology, it's nothing unusual about this geometry. But when you're going around the corners, uh, this wheel, uh, for example, if it um, turns anti-clockwise, then the sp speed of the wheel needs to change during the turn. When it's actually in its turned position, it's not so critical, but it's when the wheel's actually moving. But fortunately, uh, these, I haven't turned this on at the moment, but these, um, this, these units have got um, displays, LED displays, and I can display the torque on them, so I've managed to kind of debug what's going on by monitoring the torque. Uh, it's basically amps on the, each, each wheel. It's really useful, so I've managed to tune the, uh, the, the signal that's um, coming out of um, the TC275 uh, processor here to account for the geometry. It's not, um, it's not ideal, there's still a little bit of deviation. And because these uh, motors are basically server motors with um, optical encoders, they uh, need uh, quite accurate positioning and uh, they will fight to achieve the position. There's a certain amount of tuning in the drivers themselves which allows some deviation but ultimately they'll try and uh, reach a certain position. Uh, it's actually called a position control. So it's really important that the programming in this unit uh, takes account of the geometry here. And I've got it pretty good and um, I think what we're going to do actually get it to fine-tune. I'm going to actually get it to fine-tune itself by putting a, um, a current sensor on uh, one of these wires here to monitor the amps and then one of these wires here to monitor the amps on the other wheel and then uh, let the processor uh, balance the torque on, on the wheels to a certain extent. Can't. Uh, be a hundred percent. Maybe I'll program it so that it, it um, will try and balance to about ten percent. You give it some weighting in the programming algorithm, so it'll never be hundred percent accurate. It doesn't need to be, but yeah, you can use the uh, current coming off these devices to assist the uh, the, the tuning. But um, so that's in work in progress. I spent the whole week doing that and uh, yeah it's getting there I've got a lot of clues I think I'm, I'm on to the solution there and in the meantime uh, the CNC mechanism is pretty much finished uh, I can demonstrate the uh, x-axis here I've just set up a um, little test rig here on a piece of plywood there's the controllers and I'm just going to control it using this little potentiometer on a circuit board. And hopefully, if I move this, so we should see the whole gantry move one way or the other. There it goes. 
and there's a previous video showing the, um, the force that these um, motors can produce and I had a, a spring balance on this point here was, I had a spring balance here, 100 kilogram spring balance and these, um, these little motors are only 400 watt uh, NEMA 23 motors but they were pulling 100 kilos each <laughs> on, on this um, section here in the previous video absolutely astonishing brushless DC motors is uh, the way forward and again they're made by Leadshine uh, AC303 series or something like that and uh, really good quality can't knock it so uh, yeah that's the x-axis gantry let's have a look there it goes it's a bit noisy seems to work well and um, I'm hoping that the the power or the torque that these motors can output and the the, uh, the quality of the build we've got these massive great big ball screws huge great big um, guide rails that's real kind of heavy duty hardened steel system and um, the high wind um, ball roller uh, runners there I'm hoping that because of the the substantial nature of the build that it will cope with like, small particles of soil or dust getting into the mechanism which is a bit of a concern. Uh, if it is a problem then I'm going to have to think about minimising the disturbance of the soil using different implements. So this is the y-axis here, these, these rails here and this is the z-axis here. So let's um, demonstrate those working as well. The y-axis motor, if we zoom in here, can't see, yeah, you can just see it there, runs inside the chassis, which has got a huge great big um, oval cutout in it. So there's the chassis with those holes, there's holes oval holes in the bottom, but there's a big oval hole in the side which is a space saving innovation I suppose and um, the motor just sticks out a little bit there but what it does is it allows the x-axis to travel all the way to the side of the frame so any tool that's on the x-axis will uh, cover the whole of the uh, seedling bed so let's demonstrate that moving just give it a, a whiz on the um, slider. There we go. Quite a good speed. There's no vibration or anything, it's all seems to be. And again, it's got good travel on this side. It comes right up to the side of the, the chassis there, which is really important to get um, as much travel sideways as possible. Goes. So this one's just got one of those um, servo motors on it because it's, it's got a lot less um, weight to move than the the x-axis, which has got uh, those two of those saddles plus the weight of the uh, z-axis. So well, the y-axis motor, all it's doing is moving this um, assembly here and whatever tools bolted to the front of it. So the next thing to do is to demonstrate the, the z-axis. What's really nice about this is it's got loads of travel so it can uh, travel over to a hopper for example and pick up some onion bulbs, some kind of grab. There's nothing, there's no tool on it at the moment. It's just um, a bare plate, as you can see. So there's all the things going up and down. So 
and this mechanism is in use, it might have um, a grab or it might um, dispense seeds or it might have a rotary claw on it. Uh, it might have some kind of hopper dispensing seeds into a seedbed for planting. Uh, anything can be bolted onto that and uh, it can travel around in three, three dimensions on the X, Y, Z. Uh, so options, all options are available uh, with this machine. I'll have to see how it progresses.